What happens when we are tempted? When we are tempted, by and large, we are tempted to do what we would like to do, although we know we shouldn't do it. Isn't that the case? We are tempted to do what a little bit of us might like to do, but we know we shouldn't do it. What was the nature of Jesus' temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane that made Him say, and I think we need to take these words at face value, let this cup pass from me, that's my desire. That was a perfectly holy desire. Any other desire would have been an unholy and godless desire. Why? Because a holy man can never have any wish or desire or purpose to experience a sense of divine desolation. It was not within our Lord Jesus' holy humanity to ever desire to be in a position where He would cry out, My God, I am forsaken by You. Why? And so, the holiness of the soul of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was compelled to say to the Father, not that tree. And in doing so, He was undoing what Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden did because you know the tree in the Garden of Eden is described in exactly the same terms as every other tree. There's no other difference. If you'd walk past that tree, there would have been no crooked branches saying, I'm ugly, don't touch me. There would have been nothing about the fruit that would have said, I'm horrible, don't eat me. I mean, just read the opening chapters of Genesis, you'll see that tree is described in terms of its nature exactly the way every other tree is described. So, there was nothing about that tree in itself that would make Adam say, oh, I don't want that tree. So, what Adam was called to do was to say, there is no reason in that tree itself why I should not want it, except God has said, don't eat it. And so, at this point, I have to bow before God and say, I trust you, even though everything in me says that tree looks absolutely delicious. Now, that's actually obvious because God would not deceive a human being by making a tree that looked delicious but tasted poisonous, would He? That's a kind of basic, simple piece of theological logic. And so, as it were, at the other end of this strange spectrum of human history, Jesus is facing another tree, and everything about that tree, by contrast with the tree in the Garden of Eden, is saying, you do not want me. And His Father is saying, that's the tree whose fruit I want you to eat, and to do it simply because I'm your Father, and I'm commanding you to save men and women in this way. So, Jesus, take the cup. And the wonder of it all is, and Hebrews goes on to speak about those loud cryings and tears, the wonder of it all is that He took the bitter fruit of Calvary's tree and consumed its last bitter dregs. That's why Paul says he became obedient to death, even the death of the cross.